Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I be reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, I see them at TheMediaSpeaks.com, or say us. See us, I should say. I, listen to this. This is where I wish that I were wrong. This is one of those times when I wish to God that I was wrong. Um, remember I made the, the, the rather uh, foolish but not entirely untrue statement that my favorite dictator was Muammar Gaddafi. See, as a libertarian, I am diametrically opposed to any kind of dictatorship, any kind of fascism. I believe that the government that governs least governs best. I think that was Thomas Jefferson. If not, someone will certainly let me know in my comment line. <coughs> um, <coughs> Muammar Gaddafi had a system there. Uh, housing was a human right there. Um, he had a house of cards gathered rather nicely. There were reports that some Christians were actually told where to live, but you know what? They weren't being slaughtered. And I had said that I knew President Obama, yes, the great African-American president, who killed far more African Americans than most white presidents ever have by what he did to Libya. Obama was going to usher in a genocide of Christians because the people that were going to take over in Libya, uh, largely members of groups, and I'm going to explain this real quick. America doesn't fund Al-Qaeda. It does. It, it, when Alex Jones says it, it's right. But it's not what you think it is. Let's, and this is why you watch the correct views, because you know I'm going to break it down like this for you. Um, let's say there is Sam's band. Passing time, that's my band. Now, you really don't like band X that I sometimes jam with. You know, you know I really don't like them very much. But I like Sam, so you bring me into your project, and I start playing keyboards, and your project blows up. I give money to the band that you didn't like, and we start jamming too, and it appears as though you have funded the band that you didn't like. The trouble with this is you probably wouldn't keep funding it. Now, I know the analogy breaks down, and please, you follow me here. You probably wouldn't keep funding the band that you don't like when you hear that, but America does, and we fund them again and again and again and again and again. And that is how Al-Qaeda ends up getting funded, uh, through groups that we know are corrupt, but then we continue to fund these corrupt groups, and then we find ourselves with situations that we cannot control, like this. Libya imprisons American for allegedly proselytizing a Christianity in Benghazi. Muammar Gaddafi was very good at having the Muslims do what they're doing if they wanted to practice rather extreme forms of it. And I have no problem with, uh, with Islam, by the way. I have a problem with these... Um, I, I had, a, I had a, a meme sent to me the other day that had a Hasidic Jew on it. And it said, doesn't eat pork, doesn't want to make it illegal for you to do so. And that speaks volumes. If you are a Jew or if you are an Islamist, I personally am neither, I'm Christian. I don't care until you try to make something illegal for me to do. And that is what these Muslim groups, uh, by that I'm speaking of the Muslim Brotherhood, I'm speaking about uh, Al-Qaeda, who, unfortunately, America does fund. People learn that. It's not a conspiracy theory. Our money directly gets to Al-Qaeda when we fund people such as these idiots I'm about to read about or the people that destroyed Syria or are destroying Syria. <coughs> the man they are trying to overthrow, Al-Assad, is an awful person. And we are funding awful people to overthrow him. How are we getting anywhere? CNS News, on February 12th, about two years after the U.S. government first militarily intervened in Libya to advance the cause of Libyan revolutionaries, and five months after the Libyan terrorists murdered Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans in that country, 
the post-revolutionary Libyan government arrested a U.S. citizen for allegedly proselytizing Christianity in Benghazi. God forbid that he would be allowed to speak the word of God in a place where other people might not want to hear it. That is ridiculous. In case you can't tell by the hair, I am in a goth band. I am in an industrial band, and I'm not the least bit satanic. Do I know people that are? Of course I do. Do I have a problem with them? No. And they don't have a problem with me either. It happens when you can't just live and let live. As of today, according to both a senior administration official and a State Department spokesman, the U.S. citizen remains in prison in post-Qaddafi Libya. Post-Qaddafi Libya. What we did is we took away a very good quality of life in Libya, the jewel of Africa, and replaced it with people that imprison you for speaking your mind. The Libyan government also arrested seven other Christians in Benghazi in connection with the same alleged case of Christian prophetizing. One of the Egyptians, Azat Atala, was tortured by the Libyans while in detention. According to an Egyptian human rights law, Atala later died in Libyan custody from what an Egyptian official characterized as natural causes. Yeah, like either they didn't give him his medicine when he needed it, or they beat him to death. And this is not rare. This isn't infrequent. Oh, this will be great if my computer freezes up right in the middle of a report. No, I managed to beat it. At least for now. Um, and they beat these people, they hurt these people, and if you're thinking that this is isolated, it's not. And I'm going to get to why it's not now. Fox News. Egyptian mosque turned into a house of torture for Christians after Muslim Brotherhood protest. And, uh, it goes on and on and on. For those of you that don't follow the news... We overthrew the leader of Libya, and what I just reported on happened. Well, we also overthrew the leader of Egypt. Uh, at the time, I was dating this idiot girl, who I'm no longer with, thank God above, who was adamant that America was doing the right thing here. And yeah, I remember once we were supposed to go out somewhere, and she was telling me that she was going to a rally to overthrow the leader of Egypt. And I remember thinking, this is a red-letter stupid idea. Well, Islamic hardliners stormed a mosque in suburban Cairo, turning it into torture chamber for Christians who had been demonstrating against the ruling Muslim Brotherhood in the latest case of violent persecution that experts fear will only get worse. We put this leadership into power that did this to these Christians. Such stories have become increasingly common as tensions between Egypt's Muslims and cops mount that Coptic Christians. But in the latest case, mosque officials corroborated much of the account and even filed a police report. Demonstrators, some of whom were Muslim, say that they were taken to the Muslim Brotherhood headquarters in suburban Cairo to a nearby mosque on Friday and tortured for hours by hardline militia members. In other words, Egypt and Libya were not wonderful places to live before America got there. But they weren't hell holes. Now that America has gotten there, they're hell holes. They accomplished to one they accompanied, excuse me, to one of the mosques in the area, and I discovered the mosque was being used to imprison demonstrators and torture them. Amir Ayad, a Coptic who had been vocal protester against the regime, told the Mideast Christian News from a hospital bed. He had been beaten for hours with sticks before being left for dead on the roadside. Amir's brother, Izat Ayad, said he received an anonymous call at 3 a.m. Saturday with the caller saying his brother had been found near death and had been taken by ambulance. He underwent radiation treatment that proved he had suffered a fracture to the, a fracture to the bottom of his skull, a fracture to his left arm, a bleeding in the right eye, and a birdshot injuries. Izat Yayad said. Ron Paul was so right. Don't meddle. You have a bee's nest over here. I don't want to be around a bee's nest either. 
you know what you do? You leave the bees to do what it is the bees do. And when they threaten you, you act. Well, what about 9-11, you're going to ask? Okay. 9-11 happened exactly the way the 9-11 uh, Commission said it did, which I don't believe. But okay, it did. Bill Clinton knew that Osama bin Laden was a threat. He had a chance to take him out. I used to be a, uh, a Sean Hannity fan before he got so arrogant that he talks over his guests um, and belittles them. I don't like that. Um, we had, he had a chance to get him, and he didn't do it because he said there was no legal grounds to do so. And yet, at the same time, they said that he had been a well-known threat to America. Well, George Bush had just started his presidency. I've seen, uh, Junior, had just started his presidency. So if they already knew it, that puts it on Clinton's watch. So what I'm saying is you stay the hell out of the Middle East and everywhere else until they become a threat to you or your interests. Uh, you, those of you that watch this show know that I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not against sticking up for South Korea. That was a declared war. It was not an illegal war. Um, the two stories here that go right together. Beretta tells Maryland it will move operation if gun law is enacted. I'm going to blow through these because my posts have been long lately. And thank you for watching. The more you watch, the more I post. That's why I'm doing these so frequently because you guys have been racking up the numbers. Keep hitting share. I'll keep giving you news. I'll stay with you as long as you're with me. Beretta USA, the domestic division of the Italian firearms manufacturer, recently informed Maryland that it will move operations out of the state if a law aimed at the Second Amendment is enacted. Enact such measures at your own risk, the company told lawmakers, according to BizPack Review. And uh, read the article. It's by Kurt Nemo on InfoWars. <laughs> that ties into one, a newer one that I just saw today on Guns.com. Serbu Firearms refuses to sell 50 caliber sniper rifles to NYPD. Yeah, that's what I've been saying forever. The way that you get around these sorts of laws is you refuse to obey them. You refuse, you refuse to help the people that are causing the problem. You don't need to resort to violence. Oh, he's got long hair, he must be a killer. I have never called for violence. I, I did ask for somebody to pimp slap the Craigslist killer, but then I, even at the end I tapered it and said don't kill him. Serbu Firearms, well, until the state does. Serbu Firearms, a manufacturer of bolt action and semi-automatic 50 caliber sniper rifles, is refusing to sell their wares to the NYPD. Uh, for you Lady Gaga fans, that is the New York Police Department. Their reason, of course, is that owning to unfair gun laws, they will not support law enforcement in New York. Serbu is a one of almost 150 companies, God bless them, that has officially refused to sell to law enforcement in New York following the passage of the SAFE Act, which is the controversial, uh, I should say illegal, gun control package that has been met with scorn by gun owners across the nation, and that would be nonviolent, peaceful, never hurt anybody, legally, lawfully owning gun people. The company posted the NYPD's inquiry as well as their refusal to their Facebook page, which names omitted. Listen to this. Company founder Mark Serbu, who I have, if there was an alt, if there was an opposite of a dunce cap award, he would so get it. He said, unfortunately, we have a policy of selling to state law enforcement agencies only what is allowed to be sold to private citizens in that state. Since the passage of the New York SAFE Act, the BFG 50A is considered an assault weapon, and as such, is no longer available to private citizens in the state of New York. Therefore, we have to respectfully decline to supply your department with BFG 50A rifles. Because it is a stupid law. That is wonderful. You know what? Wonderful, wonderful to hear. Because I've been saying forever on this show, D-Lay talks about me saying it. You stick together, and you refuse to obey these laws, and these laws suddenly go away. Don't allow the government to buy up all the bullets, and guess what? They won't buy up all the bullets. I want to give a shout out to the Wounded Warriors Project, because every time you share this video and you let me know what your favorite charity is, I promote it. And the Wounded Warriors Project, uh, thank you Mike, has been sharing the video quite frequently. Um, 
This is from News Fix. A guide to California's proposed ban on smoking in apartments. I'm not going to read this like I have been doing so far this show. I'm just going to lay it out for you. You can read the article yourselves if you want to. They're trying to make it illegal to smoke in your own home unless your own home is its isolated own unit, which is unheard of in some parts of California. It's move-in day. You're sitting and basically, I'm not even going to read it because I don't want to give this scum any credit. They're trying to make it illegal to smoke in condos and duplexes and places where you might share with somebody else. Let me tell you what. It is not up to anyone to decide who does what to their own body. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Sam's secondhand smoke is where it's for you. All the studies have said it. Clinical advisor, secondhand smoke worse than smoking. Research says the effects of secondhand smoke are worse than actually smoking. What makes secondhand smoke worse for people who do not smoke? Response from Dr. Stephen Tharat, MD. Despite reports of the contrary, secondhand smoke is not worse than active smoking. The toxicology of tobacco smoke is the same irrespective of the method of exposure. The factors of dose concentration, duration, and host susceptibility all continue to the adverse health effects obscured in an individual. So-called secondhand smoke produces adverse health effects in individuals compared with those not exposed to any form of tobacco smoke. This finding forms part of the media basis of a legal legislation to limit unwanted potential to tobacco smoke. It is not worse for you than regular smoke. Now, if you want to live in a place that doesn't have smoking, then you find a condominium owner that's who owns the place and says that you're not allowed to smoke here. Because as the owner of a business, you are allowed to say who can and cannot smoke in it. You are also not allowed to say who can own a condominium and say that you are allowed to smoke in it. And if you are a non-smoker, then live somewhere else. Am I a smoker? No. If somebody has a clove, and I do love them, or if somebody has a black and mild, I'll hit it a couple of times. But no, I'm a non-smoker. Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen, my girlfriend, quit smoking. And you know what? I'm so proud of her for it because it's a stupid habit. My point is the government does not get to say who can have a stupid habit and who doesn't. Um, AGC News, two more stories to get to. I love this. Cops. Mother of two surprises intruder with five gunshots. Listen to this. Oh, but guns are bad, Sam. Guns are bad. The long the Logan View Loganville, excuse me again, mother of two assumed the knocks on the front door Friday afternoon were from a solicitor. Don't answer, she yelled her nine year to her nine year old twins who were playing downstairs, it says. When the visitor began repeatedly ringing the doorbell, she called her husband at work. Get the kids and hide, he told his wife. As he dialed 911, the 37-year-old spouse who works from home collected the children and hid with them in a crawl space adjoining her office. By that time, the intruder had forced his way into the three-story residence on Henderson Ridge Drive with a crowbar, authorities said. He allegedly rummaged through the home, eventually working his way up to the attic office. Now, if this was Pierce Morgan... He would be telling us that it was okay. The police will get there in time. And if not, at least the woman didn't have guns around the kids. Of course, the criminals did and he died. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views and goodbye. Thankfully, that's not where we're at. He opens the closet door and finds himself staring down the barrel of a 38 revolver, said Walton County Sheriff Joe Chaplin who replayed the woman's narrative in an Atlanta Journal-Constitution article. He asked her name to be withheld. Oh, you know, she's a frantic, crazy gun on her, right? She came out popping. No, she hid. She was going to let this swine take whatever he wanted as long as he didn't find her. That's what kind of freak weirdo gun owners are. The woman fired six bullets, five of which hit Paul L. Slater in the face and neck area. Chapman said, but Slater was still conscious. The guy's lying face down crying, the sheriff said. The woman told him to stay down or she'd shoot again. She had the chance to kill him and she didn't. I don't know how he lived, but swine can live through anything.
when I, again, I, I begrudge no one their life. He has not been sentenced to death, so I'm not happy that he, I mean, I'm not, I didn't want him dead, but had it happened, Slater, unaware that he had, she had emptied her chamber, obliged as the mother and her children ran to the neighbor's house. Don't empty your chamber, I guess. The injured burglar eventually made it out of the home and into his car, and basically they caught him, and he is in custody. He lived. That is the good that guns do every day. Uh, Christelle said that I wasn't getting to any weird news, so I'm going to end with weird news. Chickens. What? She wanted weird news. KFC halts chicken supply from 1,000 Chinese farms after antibiotic scare. You know what the good part of this is? The Chinese government is run by some of the worst people that have ever walked the planet, ever, in any time, in any generation, as a clear thank you. They have swine, like, uh, hundreds of pigs floating down their river that didn't cause any damage. They, they're starving, they, they, they force abortions on people. They've got everything they need to be the greatest uh, dynasty of all time, and you do know what's going to happen to them based on their communistic ways. They're going to fall, over, finish, done, gone out. Another day, another Chinese food scare, it says, Natural News, J.D. Hayes. KFC is dropping more than 1,000 farms from its network of suppliers in China to make sure that the food it serves is safe from a scandal over tainted chicken has hurt company sales in that key, meaning large, emerging market last year. Hey, Kentucky Fried Chicken, why don't you make the swine over in China pay you to hire American chicken farmers. And if they want to eat KFC, make them pay the import to have the chicken sent there instead of growing it in the most despicable nation ever. The issue came up in December when officials in China's commercial hub in Shanghai and the northern province of Sinxi were looking at KFC suppliers following claims that the chicken that the company was selling was a high antibiotics content. And I'm going to go on and on and on, but listen to this. I mean, I don't want to go on. Company officials knew of the problem in 2010, but kept quiet. KFC says that it will no longer use chicken farms that run potential risk of further supplying tainted product. That is only because they got caught. They'd have never done it otherwise. You've been eating, I don't know if you're here or not, you've been chowing on chicken full of antibiotics to the damn roof. And it's because they were trying to hide it. And uh, Colonel Sanders, from what I know of him, I saw a documentary once. Um, yeah, I watch documentaries on everything, even chicken people. And he'd be re he'd be turning over in his grave if he knew this. So, this is what the new world order brings us. Is my point. This is what globalism is. I'm not in favor of being an isolationist in that regard, but I am in favor of being far far more isolationistic than we are now. Um, you are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you so much for doing so. Donate to me if you can, because all the money that you give to me goes to a better show. I'm still trying to get a computer where I can get the graphics up like I have them. Every penny I get goes back into this show. Thank you for listening to what we do. Make sure you check out TheMediaSpeaks.com where D. Lake Court and Kyle break it down. Good night, friends, and God bless.